The Small Business Show, episode 223 for Wednesday, May 15th, 2019. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co. The show that is BFA Small Business. That's what we do here. Sponsors for this episode include a new sponsor, linode.com slash SBS, promo code SBS 2019. We'll tell you what that's all about in a minute. And also the alternative board.com slash SBS. We'll talk about that in a minute too. For now here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. How goes it, man? It goes. It's been uh, it's been busy. I was traveling again this past weekend. I was in ah, uh, yes. Princeton, New Jersey, and then Philadelphia uh, for uh, actually a, a couple of business meetings, and then I was spoke in Philly, and we also toured some colleges. Uh, I brought my son and my wife with me, and we toured some colleges because it's that time for him, and so it made sense to you know pack nice. it all together. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. That's, it was good. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. cool. It's good stuff. Yeah. It's good stuff. I, we're doing the uh, the college tours as well, and right. it, you know it's it's interesting uh, for my son. And you, you're looking through everything. Okay, well, let's go here. Let's. Go. Oh, I just I don't know. I don't know if I can. I can. You know, uh, I got to go put it on. I don't know if you guys have Naviance out there. Yeah, which of course. Is, yeah. yeah, I'm sure they have. They seem to have a monopoly on this. Uh, you, you use it as a very specific time in your life, and then That's never right. use it again, right? Yeah. Um, but. Uh, you know, I it it brought it to to, uh, to my attention when you know about preconceiving how things uh, are going to be with my son. It's like, well, I don't know if I can get in there. I don't know. It looks pretty. You know, it's like, well, let's let's figure it out and and let's let's go talk to him because maybe there's other ways. Just because Naviance maybe shows it's a stretch, maybe it's not. Sure. And sure. And yeah, which kind of you know, right. it's not the only thing, and and it can be yeah. wrong in both directions. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. 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 And I, I just I kept, you know, mentioning, hey, you know, d- uh, let's not pre uh, set up these things that, oh, it's not going to work or it's That's this. Right. And, and it, you know, it always reminds me of what we talk about here on the show all the time of creating your own reality. And and if you know, I and I, I use these same lessons on my kids, which I'm sure drives them crazy. But uh, in the long run, I'm hopefully programming them to focus on the opportunity, not on the roadblock, right? Yeah. Well, I, and, I do the same with my kids. I, when they say, yeah. Oh, I can't do that. I say, well, with yeah. that mindset, you're absolutely right. They yeah, hate you. You're totally right. Say that. Yeah. You will of make course, yourself of right. That's right. Yeah. 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 And, and it's, you know, uh, it, it, your subconscious or your inner judge, whatever you want to call it. And I, I, I thought, you know what, we've already, we discussed this in advance. I was like, it's a great time to do a show all about uh, our subconscious and how it can either help us succeed or hold us back. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. I like your, it. your subconscious mind. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in this and, you know, especially like you and I get on this show and we're positive and upbeat and, you know, but we also talk frequently about having to go through the grind of, you know, every day isn't going to be uplifting and full of, uh, you know, big rewarding things. There's a lot of stuff. You just have to kind of do the grunt work and grind out. Yep. And, uh, you know, so today's good. It, it, it's a very opportune time to, uh, to do this, <laughs> touch on this topic. So, uh, and you know, we all have this inner judge in our head and it's very easy for, uh, either to let it hold us back, but it's a little, I think a little more difficult to teach it, to really, uh, help us and propel us in our success. It, but and hopefully by the end, of the end of the show. Oh yes, yeah, absolutely. And, and I will say yep. right at the outset here that, hopefully we'll give you some tricks and, and tips to, yeah. to train your inner judge, but, and, and hopefully you will experience if you haven't already the results of that inner judge in a positive way, there is nothing more frustrating after having experienced that to having one of those down periods where like, yeah. you're, like things aren't going as, as well as you want them to. Your inner judge is telling you, no, you're a fraud. You're a failure. Like all that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And, and yeah. but you know, in your head, you're like, all I need to do is flip this switch in my brain and it all changes because it is all you. It And it's not easy. But you if you commit to it and do it, it will happen. But but the, the flipping of that switch 
does not necessarily happen overnight. And 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 no, I, it's and a, you it's, just need it, to stick with it as well. Yeah, it's a system. It's not yeah. a goal, right? Right. If you set right. a goal that oh, I'm going to train my subconscious and it's going to be my positive partner and you know just rocket me, it, it it may do that right then and as you do it, but you constantly have to nurture it and develop systematic ways yeah. to uh, teach or trick, if you will, if you want to look at it that way. Um, and uh, to, to help get get you where you want to be. And so I, I thought it would be helpful today is, you know, to first let's let's talk about the definition of it. You know, really what our definition of it, which may be different than other folks or whatever. Sure. And, yeah. uh, you know, then we'll, let, let's go into how we're going to get how, how we're going to turn it to, uh, you know, I say, like, get friendly with it. Right. Yeah. And then this I, and then I want to touch on this uh, Scott Adams and his moist robot. To theory, which we kind of just alluded to a, a few minutes ago, but so so let's talk about the definition. You know, uh, it, and we've done a little bit, but really, it's you know the voice inside your head, right? And and maybe even not the voice you get to hear from time to time, but it still controls your actions, right? Yeah, it's what you believe and, about about yourself and and what's going yeah. to happen next. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I think as as small business owners, it's really tough because. We don't get uh, our ego stroked. We don't get the pat on the back that much. Uh, we have to create it for ourselves. And you can do it by whatever success in the sales numbers, or you've got a great culture, or you've got, you know, you've cr created this great place to work, whatever it is that you've put on your success list to remind yourself that you are successful, even if they're just little small things. Um, this inner voice and this inner judge you know, really important to get friendly with it. And, you know, cause it can be your enemy. I like that idea. Yeah. Right. It's not just getting yeah. to know it. It's getting friendly. With no. It. Yes. Yeah. yeah cause you, yeah, can get you to have know to get it, it in a very, you already know it. There's no, yeah, you do. it's, yeah. it's, it, yeah. The relationship is tight. It's that it, you need to make it. Friendly <laughs> it's one. tight. Yeah. 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 And, and, and know that when you're talking, you, I think have to talk back to your subconscious and your inner judge yeah. just as much as it talks to you. And but you don't get to talk a, directly it, to it. You have to do no, it like no. via these third parties, like your success list. Yeah. Right. I yeah. Mean, it, that's yeah, really what it is. Yeah. You're triangulating right. your subconscious. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. And you're, you're, you're doing things on a, sometimes on a daily basis that is, you know, you're going to get closer to it and, and nuzzle up against it and just remind it of just how, awesome you really are yeah just how you've already succeeded you know you can take the most basic thing hey i wanted to start the day at, at 6 a.m and i did it i i've won the day by well, starting by just at 6 by getting up yeah that's you're right. already a success and and it's not like you know you're going to preach to yourself i did i did it but just that little thought oh yeah i'm i'm, I'm having a successful day yeah. because i got up and i and i did x y and z I, I use the trick every day before i go to bed i'm like okay well when i get up i need i want to knock these three things out you know before i really quote start work at eight o'clock so when i get up around six I, I sit down and I always knock these little things out and they make me feel better when I'm taking a shower and I get up to my office. I'm like, oh, man, I'm already having a great day. I've already achieved these little things. It's so smart. It, Do you it, mind it, me asking like an example of what one or two of those little things are just to give, sure. just to give our listeners kind of a, a frame of, of this? Yep. One of them today was to write the show notes for this episode. And I didn't want to wait around. I, you know, I thought about it yesterday and sure. I said, like, nope, I got too much stuff. And I said, okay, so first thing tomorrow morning, when I get up, I'm having coffee, I'm sitting, uh, the house is quiet. Nobody's up yet. I'm going to knock these notes out. And then I knock the notes out. You know, they, they, it maybe takes me 15, 20 minutes. And then I jump into the next thing. And I always, I always go to LinkedIn. I answer any messages that I've got, any notifications, I do a quick read of the business news, which I really like to do. And then I jump over. And the last thing I always do for my social selling business is I, I follow a thousand new followers. It takes me exactly just about 10 minutes. So if I, I have three things, one of which always varies, but two of which are always the same. And it makes me feel good. And it's great. And if I don't get those things done, it's not like I have a bad day, but it's part of my arsenal to... Uh, you know, be friendlier with my inner judge uh, about what I'm getting done. I like this. And they're easy. I, easy I, things. This is great. Yeah, they're they're right. They're easy things. I, and, yep. But I like the idea of doing three of them, but two are 
you don't have to think about what it's going to be, right? The, you're, yeah. you're giving yourself room to play with one, which is cool, right? You know, you have mm-hmm. some variety. Yep. But like you said, with the show notes, you you were thinking about this earlier. So Yes. Oh, yeah. So they were pretty like much you, done in my head, right? Yeah. yeah. You just had to yeah. take it from your head and put it down. It wasn't like you had to invent this thing out of whole cloth. Oh, man, that's great. Yeah. And, and really, there's four because I'm not a morning person at all. And I would I, I would be probably uh, part of me would be happier, you know, doing this from 1 a.m. or midnight to 1 a.m. or whatever. But I've come to realize that it's not a great use. It's not uh, it's not great. Good for me. It doesn't function as well with my family's time. Right. And so, OK, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, jump up in the morning. So that one thing of getting up at, at right around 6 a.m., that could be the most powerful thing that makes me feel good about the day. Right. To get started. Yeah, because you, um, you, so, you did you know. this thing that that you have convinced yourself subconsciously yes. is a difficult uh, um, yeah, it uh, is. <laughs> right. It requires some discipline, but it but, does, but it, but only a little bit, right? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, yeah. And I heard a guy talking uh, on a on a Gary V podcast yeah. where I, I listen to him on, on LinkedIn often, and this he had a Navy SEAL on, and here's this guy that's just a badass, and he's accomplished all the stuff. He wrote this best selling book and everything, and he said, he goes, oh, you know my first success of the day is getting out of bed when I want to. And I was like, Oh, that's a great framework for this because I would like to do that. And, and so, you know, don't overlook the little things they, they, they build and they cascade into, into bigger successes. Yeah, they do. And that's the thing. That's the trick, right? They do. They cascade, but you, you have to, at least be aware that you've, and give yourself credit. Like you said, your, your success list, Pat yourself on the back. You don't want to spend the entire day just patting yourself on the back. No, no, you no, also no, no. Don't want That's to omit correct. That. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I think it's it it is for people like us. It is easier to forget to recognize that you did something totally than it is to go over the top and be like, oh, I'm so awesome all the time. I mean, nobody wants that either. But uh, in once I started writing things down, once I started using that to do lid uh, to. To did yeah. <laughs> I knew a brand new one uh, the to did list method that we discussed here and and then I have that that success list thing that we've got an article up on the at businessshow.co about it really helped me because it forces me to take those it's like oh you know you're not going to have every day is not going to be full of awesome achievements unbelievable sales you know and part of the thing uh, one thing I don't like about small business maybe the only thing is over the decades that I've been doing it, I've often defined my sense of self-worth by the numbers at the end of the day. Yeah, to- totally. And, it's and an it easy took me, thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And it's taken me a long time of concerted effort to, to step away from that, although it's critically important, but that's not the only measure of, uh, you know, my sense of self-worth at the end of the day. And so these little tricks have helped me, um, you know, to, to get beyond that. So, like and, and it's programming. It's like we mentioned Scott Adams here a lot on, on the show. Um, and it, it, it's just so much of what we talk about is you're programming your brain. Scott always says, you know, we are moist robots and we have to program ourselves. And it's, and uh, this is what I think is a requirement of, you know, you get to create the program that you want. Right. Right. I've right. said it here before. You you get to write your own story. So why wouldn't you write the best story that you could put in the best program into your body and your brain, uh, you know, a, a, as you possibly can for you, you know, the unique programming of what you want to do and, ha- and how you want to feel. Um, but you got to be active, in, 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 actively doing it. It's just, just not going to happen. No, and if you not. just kind of, yeah, well, here, you slog the day through. I want to share two sentences and it's the first two sentences of, of Scott's article from 2010 entitled programming the moist robot. And they are the brain makes associations automatically. That's why aversion therapy works. If that's not enough to get you yeah. into this mindset of, oh, wait a minute, because that's right. Right. The brain does make associations automatically. That's what we're talking about here. Triangulating that subconscious. You just need to put the yeah. you need to put the information in. The brain will associate it whether you want it to or not. So you got to fill it with the things you want it to associate. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. right. 
That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's not difficult, but it does require uh, an active role by yourself. Right. Uh, yeah. on, on, a, on a daily basis with these little, little things. So I, I, th- I think we're going to jump into a, a little break here. And, but then after we come back from the break, we'll talk about tips and tricks for changing your mind and, and how to make it work for you. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And you're right. Cool. I do. I want to take a minute to talk about <laughs> our two sponsors. Our first sponsor today is a new sponsor for us and it's Linode. Linode.com slash SBS. That's L I N O D E.com slash SBS, where you use code SBS2019 gives you a $20 credit to set up instantly and deploy your SSD based server in the Linode cloud. Now, there are all kinds of reasons that we as small business owners need to have servers in the cloud, right? It, you might be hosting a WordPress site. You might be you might need to set up a VPN. You might have uh, I mean, maybe you like to play like Team Fortress 2 and you want to set up your own Team Fortress server, right? Like all of these things can be done at Linode. And in fact, the three that I mentioned You don't have to set up the server from scratch and install all the stuff. They have all of these quick start things. You just click one of those things. I needed to set up a VPN that did not exist in my office. Like it was not terminated in my office. I needed to set one up that was somewhere else. And I used the Linode cloud to do it. I set it up on a server that's running me $5 a month, right? So you take your $20 credit, $5 a month. You, you can figure out how much you get for free there, right? <laughs> and within 10 minutes, I had this VPN server up and running because, yes, I know how to, I know I'm comfortable with Unix and all that stuff, but you don't have to be. That's the beauty of this stuff is you can just set these things up and, and your server can be running. And if you want just, you know, essentially the bare metal experience in the cloud, you can do that too. All SSD storage based, so it's super fast. It's all at Linode's. You get to pick which of their 10 worldwide data centers to use. And they've got a brand new one in Toronto that not only allows users to comply with all those in-country data protection requirements, but you're also taking advantage of all of Linode's technology and tools. All of this cool stuff and this great new cloud manager that they have at cloud.linode.com. you got to check this out. So go to linode.com slash SBS. And then use coupon code SBS2019. That gets you a $20 credit. Uh, And we've already talked about how you can use that. So go check it out. And our thanks to Linode for sponsoring this episode. Our next sponsor is the alternative board. Tab, we like to say. Owning your own business is a major accomplishment, right? You've gotten this far because of your hard work, your dedication, and your ability to program your brain like we're talking about in this episode Taking your business to the next level requires help. You need to talk with other people. And that's why you need the alternative board. It's a group of business owners and experts in your area that you can turn to for valuable advice on growing your business. Tab has been helping owners and CEOs of privately held businesses for close to 30 years with their business owner advisory needs. Now, each board is made up of 10 local non-competing business leaders. You meet together for four hours each month to discuss relevant business issues, opportunities, sales, hiring, training, operations. But you also get help building an actionable strategic plan for your business and one on one business coaching in between the meetings. Having a tab membership can make a huge difference for your business. A recent tab survey showed that their members surpassed the average sales revenues of other privately held businesses by two and a half times. So. You can get the help you need to take your business to the next level and you can go and apply for free today to find out if there's a board seat available in your area. It's at www.thealternativeboard.com slash SBS. That's thealternativeboard.com slash SBS. And our thanks to the Alternative Board tab for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon. That's cool. Those are... Yeah, those are both really, really useful uh, uh, sponsors. I'm, you know, I'm the servers. Still, the, the, yeah, the, awesome. We can have sponsors that actually, you know, that that are really make a difference for your business and and do it right yeah. away. Yeah, it's great. 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. That's, That's cool. cool. So before before we jump back into and, and talk about some ways that you can uh, uh, get friendlier with your subconscious, I, I, I do want to also want to recognize, you know, a recent guest we had on Monica Shaw. Uh, she was in episode 219 not too long ago. You should if you didn't hear that episode, you really should go listen to it because Monica, who runs a coaching business called Revenue Breakthrough, you know, she just had some really powerful messages that were related to this topic and about uh, working with clients that didn't feel they, you know, uh, were, they were, were not worthy, so to speak, of, you know, earning money and get and creating wealth and stuff. And there's some really powerful and, and it, it really was the first thing that prompted us to uh, to do this episode. So uh, thanks, Monica. Yeah, it that when she talked about that during that episode, I made a note for us like, oh, this is a topic to explore. And and I yeah. I had that you know, that experience too it, in my own way. I you know, it's really hard to envision what your your life would be like if you could take things to the next level. And oftentimes the fear of not knowing what that is, not being able to envision that, right? It's the fear of the unknown. And often that can keep you at whatever level you are. Uh, I knew for, I know for me, yeah, for the, sure. the thing that sort of broke me out of that mold was all the consulting I did. You know, I would, and I'm specifically the computer consulting. I would go to people's homes and offices and, you know, fix their computers and set stuff up. And I had the opportunity, of course, to, to go and see, at people at their homes and get to know these people that were in a whole different class for me, right? Like, you know, many levels up from me. And it was like, wait a minute, like these people are just like me. Yeah. Okay. They, they are more successful on paper with money and, 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 you know, all of that, their houses are certainly bigger than mine. You know, any, any, like I, I could check off lots of boxes, but it was like, wait a minute, these people, th- th- I, I, I could do this. This is fine. This isn't, this, like, there's nothing scary about this. This is fine. And and taking that and convincing yourself and again, programming your moist robot that this is an OK thing that you know what it is. Remove that fear of the unknown. And it really does help me succeed. I've seen it with employees, yeah, too. For sure. You know, you give somebody a raise and it sometimes can or a promotion even and it can freak yeah. them out, you know, and it's like, yeah. no, no, like you got to get through that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And and I think that. Uh, you know, one of the, it, the, those things are so important to tell yourself this over and over again. And, you know, one of the f- things I picked up from watching my kids play sports uh, over the years, especially my son and lacrosse, is when they make a mistake, uh, it, it, they handle it in, a, in a, I think, a great way because, you know, the coach, they have limited time, the game's there and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so, you know, I, I kind of, you know, you have to master how you remember mistakes. And we ask all our guests to come on the show when, or when they come on, we talk about mistakes as a learning tool, but what we don't do uh, or what's important not to do is dwell on the mistake. So if you're, if you're playing, you know, uh, I, I watch my kid screw up and it comes off the field and the coach is just, you know, destroying him, you know, railing on him yeah. about, yeah. yeah, about making this mistake. But the last thing the coach says, okay, you screwed up. Now get back in, run the play, don't do it again and move on. So it's a very quick, we're going to hit it hard and I'm going to just tear you up for making this mistake. But now, you know, forget about it, get back in and I know you can do it, run the play that you practiced. Well, it's the same thing for all of us is, you know, think about the mistake you made and then build on it. You know, don't dwell on the negativity, you know, master how you remember it uh, so that it doesn't become a negative thing. Because if you let it, it will creep up and remind you anytime you're faced with that same situation or a similar situation. And that's what you don't want. You want to be able to take, Oh, Hey, I've learned from that previous mistake. So I'm not going to make that mistake again or yeah, a similar you mistake. You need to trust yourself to know about the mistake and not make it again, yeah. instead of trusting yourself to know about the mistake and definitively making it again. Right. Because if it's the latter, yeah. you're not going to yeah. try, yes. you're not going to experiment again. That's where things get. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's really important, and uh, I can tell you from personal experience, and I've I've mentioned this on the show before, but many 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 years ago, I made a tremendously expensive mistake, and I lost a, a, just you know a million bucks. Okay, well just <laughs> round numbers, it was a million bucks, and I had to go home and tell my wife, hey, I just um, I, I got to tell you something, I just lost a million dollars, and I. At and the it was time, a million dollars you didn't have either. This wasn't. Oh no like, no, yeah. I, I was making. 
to pay it back, I was I to start paying it back, I had to use credit cards. I mean, this yeah. was like I had I didn't have it, you know. I was just gonna and, yeah, just, just so people understand, this wasn't like <laughs> you had ten million and oh, you no. went down to nine. Oh no, 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 no. no. You, yeah, 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 that's you had good. Less than a, a million and now you owed a million. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good thing to point out. So I was like, wow, I'm I'm as broke as I have ever been uh, a broker. <laughs> so and, negative. And yeah. so, yeah, it's just brutal. And I, I remember telling myself, you know, there, in the beginning, I didn't even want to look in the mirror at myself because wow. I felt like such an idiot. And it was very physically, I was like, wow, this is not good, you know. And so... Uh, I, I I made myself look in the mirror and I used to every morning and I used to pound, you know, kind of pump on my chest. Go, okay, you can get through this. This is not going to be the defining moment of your business career. And only, and now looking back, you know, and this was like 20 years ago, uh, th- that I think was the beginning of uh, giving myself permission to learn from that massive mistake and move on and, and, and then flip it in the sense that, it did become a defining moment of my business career because I got through it. I didn't declare bankruptcy. I, I found a way to generate the money to pay it back. And I paid it back, you know, in five years and just got out, just moved on. So you can get through what seems like insurmountable odds, but it's your mindset of how you think about it. You know, I could have easily thought I have just screwed up. I have lost more money than I had made, you know, in the previous five years and I'm, and I'm going to be a failure forever, but you can't think like that. You, you have to cozy up to your subconscious and, and to, Hey, we're going to, you know, I'm going to power through this and I need your help. Uh, how I think about it. Yeah. Well, you, you, in, to use other terminology, not your terminology, yeah, but sure. you found your rock bottom. And, and we oh, all yeah. have a different level and I've hit different rock bottoms at different times. And I'll tell you, you know, as long as you can handle it like you did in a way where you say, OK, wait a minute, I, I need this now. I need to apply myself. Yeah. You, we all know that we can apply ourselves way better than uh, and way more than we typically do. Right. There's always sure. more. And yep. and if we were stuck in, you know, the jungle and had no food, we'd figure it out. Right. Like the human we are we are capable of, of a lot. Yeah. You, you don't know what you're capable of no. until you have to do until it. Right. You have to be, <laughs> yeah. If you if you can hit a rock bottom in a way that isn't entirely unhealthy, uh, it, it can actually be a really good thing because it forces you to say, OK, wait, a minute, I got to dig deep. I got to do this. I got to do all this stuff I knew I could do, but I wasn't doing. Here you go. That can be a oh, very yeah. powerful thing that bounce off yeah. of whatever rock bottom is. And it doesn't need to yeah. be, you know, the worst version of rock bottom you can think of. It just needs to be one that scares you a little bit. It's quite frankly what yeah, you're looking yeah. for. I was yeah. scared. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was scared. And, and you know, like I said, it took me about five years to pay it back and then I couldn't really even talk about it for like another five years, you know, and, and getting comfortable with using it as a, as a positive story. It took me a long, long time, you know, so, uh, it, 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 it worked, you know, it worked out. It's great. And I, and I do use it and I share it with people, especially, uh, that are going through really rough time. And I think it's powerful, uh, for them to hear it. And so that's why I share it here. So, yeah. Um, Yeah. So the, the next thing I had on my 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 list of my notes is that, you know, remember when you were a little kid and you used to say things like, hey, whatever you say, you know, I'm rubber and you're glue, you know, bounces off me and, and, and sticks to you. Well, there's a lot of truth to that. You know, you can't say that in a business meeting, <laughs> but, uh, you know, maybe depends on who you're with. But I mean, uh you got to take things with a grain of salt. People love to tear other people down, especially if you've had some success. And, you know, it's kind of a crummy part of, of the human condition that there are people out there that like to do that, uh, it, which it, it leads to me into another part of, you know, uh, or note that I have about getting rid of the vampires in your life and surrounding yourself with positive uh, influences people that want to tear you down and you're going to use that, Hey, you know, nothing you say is going to, it's going to stick to me. You need to eliminate them from your life one way or another. Now, some people you can't, but you, it's really important, I think, to at least yeah. offset the negativity, yeah. right? You have to identify those yeah. vampires. And, yeah. and if, if you do need to be involved with them first, I, I would question whether you truly need, like ask that question of yourself. Do I really need this person in my life? Like, do they provide more value than they take away? Right. Is it a net positive yeah, thing? Yeah. That's, that's, it, 
that yep. sometimes a hard question to ask, Very. <laughs> but yeah. you, you need to do that. But um, but then if you do have to involve yourself with with these people, you know, with these vampires, limit your involvement, you know, like compartmentalize it so that you get you extract the positive and walk away, then come back and yeah. extract the positive, walk away. Don't listen to all the negativity or whatever it is, but yeah, yep. you got to compartment, identify and compartmentalize. And if you can yeah. identify and then compartmentalize to zero, that's often the best, but if you can't, that's fine, but identify compartmentalize. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Like there are people in my life that I, I, deep I truly love and have relationships with, but I will never talk to those particular people about my business nope. because I know what's going to happen <laughs> is it's going to be a negative experience because they just can't grasp, you know, and some of these folks are like the people that ask the question, like, what exactly do you do? Right. And, and so, uh, yeah, I love that that concept of compartmentalizing doesn't mean you can't hang out with them, but maybe there's certain things that you can't talk to them about. That's it. You just avoid those that. topics yeah, that's entirely. Cool. And I, yeah, I've become yeah. the master that's of this. It, it, yeah. I say that <laughs> I I've it. become the master. Yeah. Most of the, I see what I, I just did it to well, myself. I just said, I become the master. I know that I haven't, I know that sometimes I let these people get the best of me, but I'm tell myself that I'm the master at compartmentalizing them so that the next time I'm a little bit better with it. <laughs> And there yeah, you that's go. right. No, that's I love that. Yeah, yep. it, it is. It is. An, and, and uh, you know, in my notes, too, I had it, it's a 24 seven commitment to be, you know, friendly with your subconscious and to develop this system of training and programming it to be on your side. It And I didn't realize that I was doing this all the time until a number of years ago. And I, you know, I love music and uh, talk about on the show. One of the things that's important in my business, my toolbox, right? Some music. Yeah. And I was listening to this Beck, uh, this song by Beck and it's called loser. And I think it was you know, one of those big hits. I don't yeah. Know, it was a big hit for him. Yeah. yeah decade yeah. ago or something like that. And when I, the first time when I was in the car and I was driving, I think maybe driving to work or something and I heard it and I could really hear the lyrics and there's a, there's a, uh, a section of lyrics where Beck says, I'm a loser, baby. And I found myself not being able to sing those lyrics. Yeah. I couldn't do it. And I, so what I did is I just changed it. I just put the word your, <laughs> I just changed the, you know, and I was like, Hey, that's really great. So when, to this day, when I hear that song, I sing it, you know, Hey, you're a loser, you're a loser, baby. I mean, I am not. And I cannot think of myself in that, with that phrase, however surface it may be, you know, uh, yeah. you know, singing in a song, it, it, you're putting it in your head. I just can't do it. And you I are. don't, and I don't suggest you do it either. Uh, change things around you to fit your worldview and your inner view of, uh, of the person that you are and, and, you know, make it positive. Why not? I, Why wouldn't I, you do it? Whenever I, I sing the song, I'm a, I'm a loser, right. By, by, uh, by the Beatles, right. You know, it's a great, oh, yeah. uh, Lennon and McCartney tune. I'm pretty sure it was a Lennon tune, but, um, and I love the song. I mean, it like the melody is perfect, right. but I, I, as you were telling this story, it, it made me realize every time I sing that, especially that line, I'm thinking of myself as John Lennon. Like, you know, like it's, I, it's yes. not me saying yeah, those that's words. Right. That's it's, good. it's him saying those words. So I, yeah, I didn't thing. change the words, but I changed who's saying them. Yeah, and, I and like it. Right. And it like I didn't even yep. think about it until you said this just now. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, whatever trick you like, yeah, use. I mean, I don't even like saying saying that line here on the show. Right. It makes me cringe. I'm like, I can't say this about myself. You know, yeah. I just will not let it be, you know, not not to let it happen. I just can't yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, and and. I think the other thing, you know, it's really important and some folks have a problem with it is you need to give yourself permission to really dream and visualize the way you really want your life to be the way it should be and the, and the person you want to be. And you need to, it's you know, again, surrounding yourself with people that are positive. When you're around people that give you that positive feedback, you give yourself permission to talk about it. Yeah. You know, I, right now, you know, uh, is a transition in my life and my kids are getting older and moving out. So we're talking about, Hey, you know, we're going to stay here in California. Are we doing this kind of stuff? And so I, I talk big, you know, and I see my, my wife, Renee, her eyes are like, what? We're not <laughs> this kind of thing. But I always remind her, Hey, this is a process. I'm going to be talking like this for about five years until we finally 
create and mold this future together, this next step of our lives that we really want. And how I get there is by visualizing, dreaming, and talking about the details and then lopping off the things that don't work. And then you 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 can find it. It's okay to talk through something and then decide at the end that's not actually the reality I want. Like, that's right. Yeah. That's how you figure it out. That's how I, I yeah. experience it by talking about it. It's like, oh, this is what it would be like. Oh, actually, you know what? Now that I've gotten myself here, mm, not so much. I'm going to take a couple steps back. Yeah, that's, right. that's yeah. And it's yeah. better, I think, to talk it through versus like in the case of us uh, so like, hey, let's all move somewhere. And then and then all of a sudden you turn to go, wow, I, I don't really want to live here. <laughs> you know? so and yeah, it's not so good. So, uh, you know, think big, you know. Put yourself, visualize, you know, where you want to be, what you want to achieve, what your business is going to look like, you know, really, really put it out there, put it up on the wall, write it on the mirror. You know, there's a whole, if you search for like vision board, uh, yeah. you know, online, there's millions of, of you know, articles about creating this vision of you. That stuff really works. Well, you know, I it think, may sound, I think you know, the reason, cheesy, but it works. I think the reason, part of the reason it works is it, it removes that fear of the unknown. Right. You I mean, oh, yeah. all say, I want to grow my business. It's like, well, I don't know what that looks like. That's scary. Well, pretend like you do know what it looks like. In fact, tell yourself what it looks like. Yeah. And now it's not the unknown anymore. Now you're just moving towards a thing. Right. That That's yeah. easy for most of us. Entrepreneurs are good at solving problems. Right. And if your problem is I don't know what to do next, that can be really scary. But if you just sure. dream for a little bit and sort of paint a picture then you can say, oh, so my problem is I'm here and I want to be there. Well, that's like, that's the easiest thing I can do all day is, is just yeah, plan a that. path. I'm yeah. Go. What, what would your business look like if it was twice as large, you know, 10 times as large? You know, yeah. I remember we had, uh, uh, oh man, it, his name is, he's going to kill me, but the guy from Sell Your Mac uh, oh, on the yeah, show yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and, you know, his, he was making, uh, comments and he was like, oh yeah, you know, we're going to do 5 million. And I think, you know, within five years we can do 50 million. That's Brian and Burke, I was like, right? That, yeah, it's Brian. That's right, Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian. And yeah. and I was like, that's awesome, man. You know, because that's what you want. Oh yeah, we're going to figure this out. And what's our business look like at 50 million? You know, it's not, uh, you know, uh, I mean, again, you're just you're just tricking yourself. You're programming. This is what it is. It's going to be very easy. You're not maybe not easy, but I'm going to be very comfortable having a fifty million dollar business. Right. You know, ten times where I'm at right now. There is no fear. I, I've been talking about it and working towards it for a number of years, visualizing what it's going to look like, what the numbers are going to look like, how many employees we're going to have. That that visualization and really gets you comfortable. Uh, you know, with, with achieving it. So I when you really do think get that's there, the trick, man, is that removal yeah. of fear. I never thought about it before until we did this, but th- it like, it totally makes sense that that's why that stuff works. Yeah. 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 I love it. Yeah. yeah it's great. It, it, a couple more things on my list. You know, I really am a big fan of using audio to, to program yourself, whether it's inspiring or positive music or, you know, listening to, uh, you know, whatever it is, we did a retreat, a company retreat with one of my businesses a number of years ago. And I had a, uh, speaker come and as part of the giveaway thing we did for all the employees, we had her record a customized tape for each person. Tape, it was tapes back then. It was a long time ago. Uh, a cassette, if you will. And each person filled out a little questionnaire, what they wanted to achieve, this kind of thing. And this woman recorded, uh, you know, 15 minute uh, audio with some music in the background, very soothing, telling that person, here's, hey, you're going to achieve these things. This is what your life is going to look like. This is a, and the way she did it and it, the way it was very soothing, you know, it was awesome. And it wow. again, you're just programming yourself. You're getting yourself comfortable with building wealth with having, you know, uh, yourself surrounded by people that love you and all these really great things. And that audio programming, you know, it really works. It certainly worked for me and I would highly recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. What a great idea. Oh, I like that, man. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it works great. So, you know, go back, look at the things you're achieving. Use a success list to make sure you recognize all your successes, even the small ones. Uh, You don't want to, you know, get your head full of how great you are, but you do want to remind yourself that you're achieving things, albeit even if they're small on a daily basis, 
start your day strong. You know, hopefully some of these tips and, and we'd love to hear your tips too. feedback at business show.co or business show.co slash Facebook to come talk on the small business support group. Come chat with us. We'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'll remind you, come to businessshow.co and sign up for our our mailer. It sends out every week with the the show notes for the show, which include all the chapters with timestamps and links, all the things that we talk about in the show, like that programming your moist robot article that you've already forgotten about, but you really wanted to to go and read. It's there, right? And if you sign up via email. It'll be there in your inbox, too, so you won't even have to remember because you've already forgotten about it, right? Because we we went through (laughs) 10 other things since then. Go back. And guess what? You know, we always tell you our job with our sponsors is to generate your interest and have you go check them out. Beyond that, it's between you and them, whether you buy or anything like that. Well, the links to all those sponsors are right there in the show notes, too, and you can have those in your email box. And that can really help you help us. It's a really easy thing for you to do to help us promote the show and and really keep things going. So please do go to businessshow.co and and sign up for that. And uh, we'd we'd really appreciate it. It It's good for all of us. Yeah, it is. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks, folks. Keep living that charmed life. You can you can live that charmed life. (laughs) 